Hello again everyone and welcome back to Programming in Access 2013. My name is Steve Bishop. Today's video is going to be continuing our discussion on Access SQL or SQL language. More specifically, today's video is going to be on how to join two tables together. Alright, so the most basic of join statements is the inner join. And the inner join returns records where given values are equal in both tables. So we're going to basically be taking two tables and comparing a field from each one of those tables. And anywhere where those two values are equal, you're going to return the results from those two tables. And the way that a uh, inner join looks is this way. We have in our from statement in our from key, after our from keyword we're going to where we specify those tables that we want to uh, gather information from we're going to be putting in those tables that we want but we're going to be slipping in here between the the names of the tables uh, this inner join statement so we're starting off with from and then whatever the first table is that you want to uh, you want to join in or you want to pull records from then you're going to insert the inner join statement followed by the next table. What is the other table that you want to join with the customers table? So we've got the from customers interjoin contacts. And then you'll notice that we have this keyword of on. And on is followed by the two fields from both of the tables that we need to be looking at in order to figure out and determine what records to return. We're, we're basically going to take from table one and join it with table two, and wherever the field from table one is equal to the field from table two, we're going to return all of those records. Okay, so that's what we're looking for when we're doing an inner join. We're going to just be returning those records where these two fields are equal to one another. So if the ID field of customers is one, and the customer ID field of contacts is one, then it should be returning all of the records where those two uh, values are equal in both tables. Okay, so that's an inner join. There is also an outer join. And an outer join is a little different from an inner join because it returns all records from one table. Okay, not just some of the records, not just the records where everything is equal, but actually gives us all of the records from one table and some records from another table where given values are equal in both tables. So you can return results from one table whether or not they're, you know, you can get all the results, all the rows from one table without needing it to be equal to something from the other table, but that second table does only show any opportunity where those values are equal to something from the first table. I know that probably sounds a little confusing, but we'll see it in action and it'll make a little bit more sense when you can see the difference in results from an inner join versus an outer join. So how does an outer join work? Well, our, our usage here is where we're going to, instead of using inner join, you can see I've used the word left instead. So we're going from customers, we're going to left join the contacts table on those same values that we talked about before, all those those same fields, the customers.id and must be equal to the uh, contacts.customer id. So left join is going to give us all of the records from the customers table and only some of the records from the contacts table. Okay? And the records that are going to be returned from the contacts table are wherever this value customers.id is equal to the customer underscore ID from the contacts table. So it's only going to return some of the records from the contacts, but it will return all of the records from the customers table. The other option is to go with the right join, and it does pretty much exactly what you would think is uh, it would do, which is kind of switch this all and some. So we get some of the customers, but all of the contacts. But we're still using the same identical criteria. We've just swapped out left for right, and now we're going to get all of the records first from whatever the table is to the right of this join statement, which would be the contacts table. Up here, we get all the records from the table that is to the left of the join statement, and that table would be the customer's table. So it's just a good rule of thumb to remember. Left means that you're going to get all of the records from whatever the table is to the left of the join statement, and 
when you use the right join, you're going to get all of the records from the table that is on the right of the join statement. Okay, so there you go. That's the difference between a left join and a right join, and these are called what we call outer joins. When you're dealing with some of the other types of languages, such as Transact SQL or Oracle, you may actually use the word outer. So sometimes it's left outer join, right outer join. But in Access, you don't even need the outer. You can just do left join or right join. Okay, so just to recap, full usage here. And this includes the select statement, where we're going to select from our customer's table, we're going to get the customer name and the first name of the contact and the last name of the contact and the email of the contact. Okay, so notice we're pulling from two different tables here. We're getting the customer name from the customer's table. We're getting the first name from the contacts table, and last name and email also from the contacts table. So we're pulling data from two different tables, and we're going to use the inner join in order to grab all of those records where these two values are equal. And then, of course, we have the left join using the same exact syntax, but of course, this will pull all of the records from the customer's table and only those records from the contacts table where these two values are equal. And then, of course, we have our right join where we're going to basically have exactly the same context. The only thing is we've uh, just switched left for right, and so that means we're going to get all of the records from the contacts table and only some of the records from the customer's table where the ID and uh, customer ID are equal. All right, I hope that makes sense to you guys. We're going to go ahead and hop out here into Access, and let's see what these things look like in action. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and bring over a couple of tables. I'm going to bring over my contacts table and my customers table. And because we set up relationships before, it automatically assumes this relationship. And if I actually go ahead and look at the SQL behind it right now, you can see Access has already formed that join statement for me. You can see it's using left join. And again, just remember, left means get all of the records from the customers and only those records from the contacts where these two values are equal. So if we look, go back into the design view, you can see it's basically saying, and we're going to get all of the records from the customers and only some from the contacts. And in fact, if I right click on this arrow and go to the join properties, you can see it even has that little checkbox that we went over way back when in the ver early beginning when we were talking about relationships. You can see it's selecting this relationship based upon what we have as the actual SQL statement. Okay, so include all records from table one customers and only those records from table one contacts where the join fields are equal. All right, so we could obviously switch that. I click OK here and that swaps the arrow. You can see that it's changed around. And if I look at my SQL statement, you can see it now says it's a right join as opposed to left join. So it's going to use all of the contacts. It's going to return all the contacts and only some of the customers. Okay, so uh, that's what's going on behind the scenes between the left join and right join. And of course, if we switch this to inner join, I'm just going to change that word out. And now we take a look at the design view. You'll see, uh, oh, I got to have, it doesn't like me not having something there. Uh, let me just table one customers. Okay, just to get that out of the way. Now if we look at the design view, now that I've changed it to inner, you can see that it is uh, not doing an arrow there. It's actually joining and giving us uh, no arrow, and it's just actually specifying that all the records between these two tables uh, where those two values are equal. And again, if I hit the relationship here, oops, and take a look at the join properties, you can see only include rows where the join fields from both tables are equal. Okay. So that is the difference between left join, right join, and outer join. Let's take a look and see what the results are from this distinction. So right now I've got inner join. Let me go ahead and swap this out. I'm actually going to go ahead and go into the SQL view, and I'm going to type this out. We're going to go table one customers. I'm going to go with customer name. And I put a comma. We're going to go contacts. Oops, table one contacts. And first name table one contacts last name and table one contacts oops contacts email okay hopefully I didn't fat finger everything and I got it right we take a look and we could see our results are that we get the customer name and remember the customer name came from the 
customers table here, right? And you'll see that we only get the customers from Metro Properties, Metro Properties, and another company, okay? Despite having this third company that I've called MicroShell here, uh, that is a, another company that's from this table one customers table, but you'll see it doesn't show up in the results for our query. That's because if I look at the contacts, oops, I didn't want to go into the design view. I wanted to open it up. There we go. If we look at our contacts, we can see the customer ID field only has a one and a two in it. So it's one, one, two. But you'll see that the ID field for the customers table, there's a value of three for microshell. Okay. So because our contacts table only has a customer underscore ID value of one, one and two, but there's no customer underscore ID value of three in here, it's going to leave off anybody or any mention of this micro shell company. And we look at the query, you can see Metro Properties, Metro Properties, another company. There's no micro shell. Okay. And then it goes ahead and pulls over those other three fields that we grabbed from our contact table, first name, uh, last name, and email. Okay. So that's how that works. Now let's go ahead and go back into our query here. And I'm going to switch this out so that we're going to do just a left join. And remember, left join, once again, to reiterate, left means we're going to grab all the records from the customers and only the records from contacts where there's a value that is uh, where you know these two values over here are equal to one another. So let's see what our results are from that. Now you can see that microshell company has appeared, but we don't have any contact information. So we're getting all of the records from our customers, but we're only going to get the records from uh, our contacts list where this customer ID is equal to the ID value of the customer's table. Okay, so there you go. That's how you can get a whole list of all your cust all your customers and and still just only you know it'll leave open these are basically null values in here uh, where there's no data is actual absence of data there's nothing in here there's not even a space it's absent of any information um, it's leaving these null here because there is no contact that's associated with this micro shell company all right now we're going to just make that one last switch we're going to change from left join we're going to go right join and we'll see how this changes it. We're back to what looks like that inner join statement, but there's a little trick here. This is only because I don't have uh, a customer ID of three in here, remember? So because I don't have a customer ID of three, and we're pulling all of the contacts from our, con from our contacts table, but we're not getting anybody from the customers table. So let's do this. If I go and make, uh, a customer ID of three, which uh, actually let's make it four. I'm sorry. So customer ID of four, which again does not exist here. Okay, and we're gonna go uh, Jack Lane and J Lane at another company dot net. Okay. So Jack here is for customer ID four but there is no customer ID of four. And so what is our query return if we requery it here? Let me go back out here. And again, right join means we're gonna take and grab all the contacts, but only some of the customers. And the sum of the customers, those, those customers that we're gonna see are where ID from the cost customers table is equal to customer underscore ID from the table one contacts table. All right, so let's see what this looks like. Lo and behold, now we get Jack Lane, okay? But he doesn't belong to any particular company, right? So that's the data that we're going to get as a return for using the right join statement, okay? So there you go. There's the difference between left join, right join, inner join, uh, and we will see that this is a highly useful skill. You're going to need to be able to uh, grab information and find out how it's res uh, associated with each other. And this forms the basis of relational database management, okay? 
Uh, re relational database management is where different information is related to each other. And the way we form those relationships and discover those relationships is using the right join, left join, and inner join statements. Okay, so there you go. There you have it. If you have any questions, please feel free to drop me a line in the comments section below. And if you have any questions outside of this or some sort of video you'd like to see next, please feel free to drop uh, a message off to me and I'll see what I can do. Thank you very much.